as a math teacher, I've, I've often had to remind myself that the English language is actually inherently confusing, in that it's often ambiguous. And if you're a math student, that only adds to your problems sometimes. And I don't think English is necessarily the easiest language to learn math in, unfortunately. The case in point would be a topic like this, exponents. Now, rather than explicitly tell you uh, what an exponent is, firstly, I'd like to just show you what it is. Uh, because, again, this is, I'm trying to avoid using certain terms. An exponent is an operation. And an operation, you probably remember, is something like addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. When you use exponents, you're actually performing a slightly more sophisticated form of multiplication. That's all that it really entails doing. Um, a good example would be something like this, again, just to show you. Imagine for a second you had a very large 2, and beside it, raised in superscript, the number 3. This is an arithmetic expression, because it has no letters, just simply numbers. And each of the pieces that form the expression actually have particular names. Uh, in actuality, it's this piece, the 3, that is the exponent in question. The number that is written beside it, this larger 2, uh, is referred to as the base. This entire thing, the outcome of this, and remember it's multiplication, so the outcome is going to be a product. The product outcome is actually referred to as the power. Now again, because the English language and its usage is very frequently confusing, very often, and I'm guilty of this myself, uh, people want to use these two uh, words interchangeably when they're referring to the three, but that isn't actually correct. It is better to say that the power is the outcome of this multiplication uh, rather than uh, the individual part, three. Now here's what I mean by ambiguity. Whenever you see something like this, what's called just base 2 exponent 3 for right now. The instruction literally is write 2 3 times. And what people often think instead because of the ambiguity of those words that are selected is this. Write 2 times 3. And it is not this situation. And here's why. If you were to follow the actual instruction of writing 2 3 times, that's this. Writing the number 2 thrice. And then actually doing multiplication. If you were to instead to follow what people often think, write 2 times 3, you get this. You might say, well, you know, maybe you get the same answer. But be careful, because what you have here actually are multiplication and not addition symbols. The outcome of 2 times 2 times 2, this being 4 and then the leftover 2 would be 8, is the correct answer. Instead, the outcome 2 times 3 is simply 6. And obviously, 6 does not equal 8. This instruction, which people often mistake, is not correct. When you get exponent problems, all right, you have to write the number 2, because it's the base number, or whatever base number it is. If it's 7, write the number 7 three times. Write it the number of times that is the exponent. The reason for the confusion, I would uh, have to figure, is because the word times in this instance, is being used to represent repetition of it being written. In this instance, times is being used to refer to the operation. But exponents recur uh, are referring instead to this. This is the proper instruction. Write the number, whatever it may be, so many times that is the number that's written here. And then do multiplication after the fact. So obviously you could see that there is some ambiguity there. Again, the word times has two different meanings. 
right, and this is the correct one. For sake of clarity, it might be better to refer to the expression by its parts. And you would read something like this, for example, as base 2 exponent 2. Um, the reason is then there'd be, if you had said it the other way, there would be, you know, two twos. Which is not to be confused with, say, something like this. Even something as simple as a 2 written with a 3 in superscript besides it, you have a lot of alternatives. Right? You could simply just refer to this as uh, base 2 exponent 3, which I think is, although more syllables, more clear. Or, what you see is what you get. It's 2 cubed because it has a 3 here. That always refers to cubes. Well, you can go this route. 2 to the third. Actually, to, to add to the confusion of this, this last choice, 2 to the third, right, you can say 2 to the third power. Um, that is legal. Um, but if you were to take it one step further, it actually would end up being 2 to the third power of what? What does it stem from? 2. Right? And in the same sentence, you see that there are three twos, in addition to there being a third power. It's very annoying. Anyway, um, that's why I say that for right now, especially if you start out learning this, the best thing for everybody's sanity is probably to go with this choice. Right? If you want to get a little bit fancy, that's cool. You know, As long as you are referring to an exponent of 3, you could say cubed. Right? And if you have an exponent of 2 up here, then you could say squared. Very often in math, there's more than one way to do something. And as you can plainly see, there's more than one way to say something, even. So, moral of the story. Next time that you are confronted with an expression that includes an exponent, how many twos are you going to write? You're going to write that many. Two, two, two. And then do multiplication. And you're in result once again. Working left to right, 2 times 2 is 4 from this much, and 4 times the remaining 2 is 8.